Then our scripture reading this morning comes from John chapter 10, verses 11 to 18. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for, his, for the sheep. He who is a hired hand and not a shepherd, who is not the owner of the sheep, sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and flees. And the wolf snatches them and scatters them. He flees because he is a hired hand and is not concerned about the sheep. I am the good shepherd, and I know my own, and my own know me. Even as the Father knows me, and I know the Father, and I lay down my life for the sheep, I have other sheep which are not of this fold. I must bring them also, and they will hear my voice, and they will become one flock with one shepherd. For this reason the Father loves me, because I lay down my life so that I may take it again. No one has taken it away from me, but I lay it down on my own initiative. I have authority to lay it down, and I have authority to take it up again. This commandment I received from my Father. This is the word of God for the people of God. So in our scripture today, we find Jesus teaching through parable and the parable of the good shepherd. Now this particular parable is one that for most of us that have lived in a country area, we can really understand this parable. Perhaps if you were someone who had grown up in the city your entire life, it becomes a bit more muddled when you think about it. But for us, it seems to be pretty straightforward. You see, I know that most of us may not have raised sheep, but many of us have had experience raising some kind of animal. And I don't mean children, just some kind of animal. The methods may have changed from the time of Jesus, but I think we can understand what he's trying to get at, at this, in this parable. You see, if you haven't raised sheep, just insert whatever animal you're most familiar with, and I think it still makes sense. You see, Jesus is obviously not talking about raising animals. He's talking about being a shepherd to the people. However, just like a shepherd, he tells us that he will know his own, and his own will know him. And this is the thought that resonates with those that farm. You spend so much time around the animals, you can tell them apart from one another. And if they get mixed in with someone else's flock, you're probably still able to recognize them. The animals begin to know you as well. They recognize you as the person that tends to them and feeds them. Now, I am not a farmer. I've never been a farmer, but I have spent time around animals. When I was a kid, my dad and I would go and fish on one of his friend's cattle farms. So in Oklahoma, primarily where you fish is you fish on the ponds on people's property, as opposed to here where you go to the river or the creeks. And when I was old enough, my dad would let me drive his truck through the pasture down to the ponds in the fields. And I really thought that was one of the best things ever, getting a chance to actually drive. Until one day, I had a run-in with a cow. You see, the guy who farmed the land would drive his truck out into the pasture, and the cows would come to the truck because he would feed them out of the back of the truck. And so they had become accustomed to seeing vehicles coming and then thinking, oh boy, it's dinner time. So they would come running to the truck. Now, as I was driving to the pond one day, the cows began to come running to us. And I was driving very slowly because there was no road in the pasture. You simply drove down to the pond from, from the gate. And usually, if you just keep going slowly enough, the cows get out of the way. Unfortunately, one day a cow decided that he wasn't moving, and I managed to hit him with the truck. Now luckily there was no damage to the truck, or probably more importantly to the cow. But I think that was the last time that I was allowed to drive down to the pond. But you see, we are like those cows for Jesus. Once we are his, once he has claimed us, he knows us forever and we know him forever. We are marked as his, and he is ours. So when we give our lives to Jesus, we, began, we begin to realize that he is the one that takes care of us. He is the one that feeds our souls. 
Sometimes, he's even the one that feeds our stomachs. If you've ever been given food by a group that's doing so in the name of Jesus Christ, even if it's just to come to a meal that's being raised for mission trips or whatever it may be, then Christ has literally fed you. And one of the thing, uh, other things that Jesus talks about in the scripture today is how a shepherd acts when he sees a wolf coming. He says that a person that is just a hired hand will run away from the wolf and leave the sheep to that wolf because they don't truly care for the sheep. They're simply there to do a job. But a shepherd, one who owns the sheep, will stay and fight that wolf. And that is some great news for us. You see, as we are the sheep and he is the shepherd, it means that when the wolf comes for us, he is going to stand his ground and he is going to fight that wolf for us. So we rest assured that knowing no matter what life throws at us, we do not have to go it alone. Our shepherd is right there and he is going to help protect us and walk beside us through those difficult times. Now last week at Kleins Grove, during the children's message, Heather Keller talked about a pastor being the shepherd of the church. And she showed the kids a shepherd's crook. And now I'm guessing that most of you know what a shepherd's crook looks like. But just in case you haven't seen it, it's a long staff that has a circle at the top of it, a half circle at the top of it. And a shepherd can use the crook for many purposes, but two of the main ones are for defending against predators using the staff, or to pull the sheep out of a bad situation or closer to them by using that circular part. And in the children's message, Heather talked about how we have the good shepherd of Jesus and then we have a shepherd of a church as a pastor. Now, I like to think of Jesus as the good shepherd, the pastor as the shepherd who's doing the best they can for the sheep, right? That is the difference between, between the two. But as the shepherd of the church, I must tell you, and I'm going to guess you already know this, I am much more inclined to use the circular part of the staff, the circular part as opposed to using the staff when it comes to preaching. I believe that it's more effective to work towards bringing closer to us, to each other and to God, than it is to try to beat them with the staff. See, we do this by taking time to get to know one another. We do it by studying the Word of God together. We bring ourselves closer to one another by being in community to worship with each other and by supporting one another in times of difficulty. Now you all know that with animals, most of the time they live together peacefully. Sometimes, however, they do fight with one another. Of our, our dogs at home, we have... Uh, three, and, and mostly they get along really well. But every once in a while, they fight to the point where I have to break them apart over what, who knows. But it seems to be that way. And we're like that too. See, sometimes we fight with one another. But as the shepherd of your flock, you have to separate them and figure out what the problem is. So we must do that with ourselves as well. See, we're usually able to gather with one another peacefully, but at times... We disagree, and we argue with one another. And that is the time when we need to look to the great shepherd, the good shepherd the most. That is the time when we need to be praying and to listening to what Jesus wants us do, to do to resolve those problems. And it's not just for our own benefit and our own peace, but for the benefit of our ministry together. Now, as I said, I am much more likely to use that crook to draw people closer than I am to use the staff. However, I was reminded in a meeting with the district superintendent this past week that sometimes it is my responsibility to use the staff. Sometimes it is my duty to preach and to teach some lessons that may hurt when they are heard by people. And I want you to know if you've ever heard me preach something and it hurt you because it felt like I was talking directly to you, I wasn't talking directly to you. And I promise that I will never single a person out from the pulpit if there is an issue. I will simply talk to you directly. 
But if you have felt that way, and if you're about to feel that way today, I need you to know that it's not me speaking these words directly to you. But if you feel compelled today in your heart to change or to recognize the need to change today, it is because the Lord is speaking to you. So, here comes the staff. We, as the followers of Christ, must begin to do more to bring others into the fold. It is the responsibility of all his sheep to work towards growing the flock. We must live our lives in ways that make Jesus Christ proud to say, that one is mine. And we must be willing to say to the world, no matter the situation, I am one of his. We must not allow the evils of this world to tear us away from the good shepherd, and we must be willing to accept his crook or his staff, whenever he chooses to use it. So what does that mean for us? When he calls us to do something, we answer. When he directs the footsteps of our lives to go somewhere, we go willingly. When we make mistakes, we accept the mistakes we have made, we repent, and we move forward back in line with him. Now here's the thing about the pain of the staff. It is not something that I use or something that God uses to beat you over the head with, unless you're stubborn and need to get hit over the head with it a couple times. It is used so that the pain that you feel when the words hit you can be used to bring about change in your life. Not for me, not even just for you, but so that you can grow in your walk with Jesus. See, there's perhaps no greater catalyst for change than pain. We learn this early on. As a child, when you touch something hot, the pain tells you, you shouldn't do that again. So it is with the pain that we feel from the staff of the shepherd. When we make a mistake in our lives, when we do something that we're ashamed of, the pain that we feel inside is there so that we learn not to do it again. So if you're feeling that pain today, learn from it. Give that pain to the good shepherd so he can use his crook to bring you closer. Now, if you haven't made a declaration of your love of Jesus Christ, if you haven't chose to say, I am his and he is mine, I urge you not to wait another day. Let today be the day that you come forth and declare your profession of faith. He is waiting to welcome you into his flock. And we are waiting to welcome you into this church. So if you feel so led today, I would ask that you come forward during our closing song today. And if you don't feel ready to come forth today, but you feel the stirrings in your hearts and want to talk about it more, I ask that you contact me so that we can talk about this together with one another. My challenge is for you this week. Do your best to use the crook to bring others closer to God. Use your staff sparingly, but use it when it's needed so that people can learn to come closer to God. Amen.